as we right as we arrive there. Got uh, it. All right, shall I? All right, give me one sec. Okay. We're ready to go. All right, it's 10.02 a.m. And I'm calling to order the meeting of the Board of Directors of Friday, November 18th, 2022. Uh, before we start, please note this <clears throat> meeting is live streamed on YouTube and recorded. Members of the public are encouraged to watch and listen to the meeting on YouTube or by dialing into 415-569-6446 for the audio of this meeting. If you would like to provide public comment at today's meeting and have not done so already, please call 415-569-6446 and let the facilitator know you'd like to provide public comment. I appreciate everybody's patience as we move through the meeting. Madam Secretary, the roll, please. Thank you. Good morning again, everyone. Starting with Director Arnold, who's absent. Director Conroy, not here yet. Director Garbarino. Here. Director Judice. Here. Director Crosball, not on yet. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Mastin. Here. <clears throat> Director Parr. Present. Director Rabbit. Here. Director Radoni. Here. Director Snyder. Present. Director Stephanie. Present. Director Thier. Here. Second Vice President Hill. Here. First Vice President Cochran. Here. And President Tirio. I'm here. Thank you. You have not, uh, you have 12 and, um, directors on, and I'll alert you if others join. Uh, Thank you. Dennis Mulligan. Here. Joe Wire. Yes. Eva Bar Furbish. Present. Kim Manolias. Madeline Chen. Here. Dave Rivera. Good morning, present. Mona Babauta. Present. Thank you. Jim Swindler is not with us today. And Kelly Hopper. Good morning. Thank you. That confirms everyone on the line. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. And I will ask for your continued patience as we get through today's board agenda. I'd like to remind my colleagues, mute your microphones, please. And remember to unmute when we open up for director's discussion. If we have directors calling in by phone, which we don't, okay. But if uh, we have directors eventually calling in by phone, please use your mute button or star six to unmute yourself. I'll ask for any questions or comments on items on the agenda items. Click on the raise hand function uh, on your device if you have a question or press star nine for the raise hand function if joining by phone. If there are any questions, the secretary or I will call on you accordingly. If we miss your raised hand, please speak up or wave your hand furiously. Um, following any discussion, we will take the appropriate roll call vote. If you are not speaking, please remember mute your phones to minimize background noise on today's meeting. Please follow along by referring to the page numbers located on the bottom right-hand corner of your meeting packet. Director Conroy, she's not here, is she? She's not joined us yet, so I, I think you're going to have to call on a, a willing volunteer to lead us off on our pledge. I see Director Snyder on the screen next to me. Director Snyder, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thanks. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United flag States of America, America. America. to the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, one, one nation. nation. Under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And um, before we move on to public comment under item number four, Madam Secretary, how many callers are we up to now? We have still three, but I believe Justine will love to uh, poll one more time after she's done. Um, so we can start with a three and then she'll ask for some time to poll. Okay. Um, Ms. Bach, uh, please proceed. Um, due to large, pardon me. No, that's right. You have three minutes a piece is good because we have so few, uh, few callers. That's fine. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Our first speaker is Manuel Gamboa. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Go ahead. Um, a few years back, I believe it was 14 or 15, 
board of supervisors or the, the board, you guys approve funding of a suicide deterrent net system. Like I said, I don't remember the year, but after it was passed, there was a lot of applause and there was a lot of satisfaction. Well, I wasn't satisfied and I wasn't applauding. I walked out and a reporter followed me and he wanted to know my reaction. And I had told him that, that I wasn't happy. I wasn't, you know, with that, um, I told him as soon as I could go out there in the area where the highway patrol marked my son jumping over the bridge September 20th of 2013 and dying, which was lamppost 77. So I could walk out there and see this system, this item that's going to go on there that could have prevented his death that day. Then I will be at ease. I will be at peace on this side of his death, the Golden Gate Bridge side. Well, September 20th of 2022, I went out there to memorialize my, to, to remember my son that I've been doing for the past nine years. And I see the net. I see what have, could have prevented him from jumping over. I've been using the word now, it would have interrupted his day. And with that word going through my mind, I see this now. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank board members, contractors, everybody involved, Ava, Dennis, uh, everybody there, because this will, and I truly believe will save lives on the day that these people want to go there and jump off the bridge. With that, yesterday, there, I got together with a group of people. They call themselves the Golden Gate Bridge Survivors. It's just people that have loved ones that have jumped off this bridge. And at this event, I can see their happiness, their you know, they're, they're humble, they're, 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 you know, they're healing, we're healing. And with that, I just wanted to thank you for allowing us to get together at that gathering. Because I feel the same way as they felt. I felt some healing and some comfort. And I just want to let you guys know this. Thank you. And with that, uh, Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And if I'm not going to be talking with you, well, uh, Kyle's mom, my wife, Kim, will be. And uh, once again, thank you for all you guys are doing to help prevent suicides and to making that bridge a safer place. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Gamboa. Uh, Ms. Bach, the next speaker, please. Our next speaker is Dave Rohde. Mr. Rohde, go ahead, please. Board members, managers, and staff, good morning. My name is Dave Rohde. I'm a 30-year resident of San Francisco and have worked the past four years with Al Gore's Climate Reality Project. Today, I'd like to offer sincere congratulations to the board and management of the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District. Yesterday, at the Budget and Operating Committee meeting, I was happy to see an excellent thorough presentation on electric ferries and zero emissions fuel options. And not to steal your thunder, Mr. Mulligan, but I looked ahead at your general manager's report for this morning and cannot help but applaud the news that the bridge district will be engaging with the MTC in a coordinated study with other transit agencies planning, among, among other things, for a zero emissions infrastructure, including shared charging stations. As you know from my past remarks, I'm very impatient when it comes to clean energy solutions 
and anxious to see rapid progress in all forms of climate action. I'm not alone, of course. At the beginning of the COP27 climate conference that's winding up today in Egypt, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres gave a warning that's particularly apropos for transit agencies and transportation in general. He said, we are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. The bridge district's transition to fleet electrification can't happen fast enough. But your exploration of options for electric ferries and the fact that you're beginning to plan for shared transit agency charging stations are all steps in the right direction. Don't expect me to quit being impatient. My wife would tell you that's my nature. But when it comes to climate change, we should all be anxious. So I won't quit holding your feet to the fire, but I do again congratulate you for the steps you're taking. Thank you for putting up with me and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Mr. Rohde. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Uh, Ms. Bach, the next speaker, please. Our next speaker is David Pilpel. David, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, go ahead. Great, thanks. Um, so thank you uh, very much for listening to my uh, comments yesterday on a variety of topics at the uh, committees. Um, I just had a couple of things to um, add this morning. Just wanted to reflect on uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, extraordinary uh, tenure and leadership as uh, House Speaker, and I'm sure whether directly or indirectly, um, the, not only did we all benefit, but the bridge I, and the district, I believe, uh, benefited from uh, her work on uh, transportation appropriations. Um, perhaps the general manager can speak to some of that. I've run out of fingers and toes to count up the, the millions and, and all of that. Um, I also appreciate that um, the general manager takes the time to uh, respond to uh, public comments that are made um, at uh, the board and the uh, committees. I find that that is not the case at all uh, public meetings. And while we don't always agree on everything and that's fine, uh, it does uh, suggest that the public is being um, heard. And I very much uh, appreciate um, that uh, practice of uh, the district. Um, and finally, uh, regarding planning for uh, in-person uh, meetings, which was um, uh, mentioned in the um, uh, 2023 uh, calendar item uh, later, um, I, I understand there are logistical challenges and legal questions and ADA access and all kinds of uh, things. But if there's um, any way between now and March, if in fact the um, emergency ends as is currently uh, planned, if there's a way to continue to allow remote uh, public comment, that would be great. I think that's really expanded opportunities for the public uh, to be involved without having to uh, schlep, um, whether it's across town or great distances to attend uh, board and committee meetings. Those are my thoughts for this morning. Thanks again for listening. And thank you, Mr. Pilpel. Um, Ms. Bach, did you want to poll again? To see if there's anyone else out there looking to comment? I would like to, if you don't mind. Thank you so much, President Ontario. One more minute. You have been muted to un- Mute off. We have no other speakers this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Bach. Um, General Manager Mulligan, I heard at least one request for comment uh, from you in there, if you would. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the board, staff, members of the public. Um, I want to thank all three speakers, uh, and I want to wish all of them a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. But with respect to uh, Mr. Gamboa, we cannot thank him enough for his advocacy. Um, and we are uh, very, very grateful for his continued uh, reminder of how important that project is. Um, we're also very pleased that yesterday he was able to participate in an event that the Bridge District hosted. It was a very private event. It was a solemn event and it was for families who had lost loved ones at the bridge. So none of us were there um, because it wasn't about us. It was for them and it was at the contractor's yard in Richmond. And uh, we're very, very appreciative of the 38 family members who showed up at that for some very special moments together. 
Uh, with respect to Mr. Rohde, I appreciate his kind words and advocacy, and I look forward to his continued uh, lack of patience uh, regarding our efforts. Um, but uh, that is very helpful to us. It's a very helpful reminder, and we're very grateful. Uh, for Mr. Pilpel, um, we cannot thank Speaker Pelosi enough. Uh, as a Bay Area resident, as an American citizen, and as the general manager of the Bridge District. Um, if you have the opportunity to go into her office in D.C., um, there's pictures that she has up that she chooses to show. Uh, one of them is she and her daughter on the roadway on the Golden Gate Bridge. Another is of she and her family at the North Overlook uh, from various events we've hosted. Um, she loves the bridge and her love of the bridge uh, comes through and has over all the years and she's just been very, very kind to us in her advocacy. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm at a loss for words that adequately describe how grateful I am for all that she's done for us. Um, with respect to in-person meetings, uh, you know, as Amaret has reported to the board, um, we anticipate that in March we will have in-person meetings and Amaret is working with the president to ensure that the public will have an opportunity to comment remotely so they don't have to schlep across town. Uh, and so with that, I'm available to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, General, General Manager Mulligan. Are there directors? Actually, I think I'll wait on questions until uh, uh, your report, uh, General Manager Mulligan. Uh, and uh, I, I will add with regard to um, to uh, uh, now member of Congress Pelosi uh, that um, I uh, I had the great honor uh, for uh, uh, a good many years of uh, saying that she was my member of Congress uh, in the recent redistricting. I got pushed out of her district. But uh, prior to that, uh, I, I had the privilege of, of voting for her on numerous occasions. Um, all right, uh, so uh, that concludes public comment uh, for today. Uh, Madam Secretary, the next item on the agenda, please. Thank you. We're going to move on to item number five, and that's to approve our consent calendar, including approval of minutes from the committee and board meetings in October, as well as ratification of actions uh, by the auditor controller. Um, the consent calendar is located on pages 5 to 43 of your packet, and I want to note for the record that on our agenda last month, I listed the parking item to amend the master ordinance um, as a resolution, but in our official minutes included in the packet before you, I corrected that error to reflect that it action was actually to amend the ordinance, so it's an ordinance. So with that um, correction, I respectfully request your approval to the consent calendar. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Are there um, directors? with questions, comments, corrections on the minutes. I am seeing no hands. Uh, are, are you, Madam Secretary? I don't see any hands up. Then may I have a motion, please? So moved. There second. Was a, and there is a second. Um, Madam Secretary, we'll call vote, please. Thank you. We're voting on item number five with the first and second, starting with Director Arnold, who's absent, Director Conroy. Director Conroy, Aye. Will circle. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Director Garbarino? Aye. Director Judice? Yes. Director Grosvall is absent. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Mastin? Aye. Director Parr? Aye. Director Rabbit? Aye. Director Rodoni? Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Director Thier? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Tyrio? Yes. Thank you. You have 13 eyes. Uh, 13 makes it pass. Um, Madam Secretary, uh, the next item, please. We're going to continue on to item 6A, and that's the report of the general manager, and that staff report can be found on pages 45 to 53 of the packet, and Dennis is here to present his report. Dennis, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Madam Secretary, President Tyrio, members of the board, members of the public. My written report is before you. I'll highlight just a couple items. Uh, with respect to the uh, impact of COVID-19 on our district operations, um, it's not just COVID-19, it's the uh, general state of the economy. Today, the amount of vacant office space in downtown San Francisco is equivalent to 20 Salesforce towers. So not surprisingly, commute travel in the Golden Gate Quarter, whether by bridge, bus, or ferry, lags and is well below pre-pandemic levels. So those are things that we don't control, those broader economic forces. Um, the return of our commute is tied to the reopening, the rising of the Phoenix of downtown San Francisco yet again, like it has done every time historically. 
So during the week of October 30th, bridge traffic was down about 18%, but during the morning commute period, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., it was down 30%. Uh, bridge and bus are still well below pre-pandemic levels. Um, what's down, though, is the commute portion of those travel modes. The week of October 30th, revenues that we would collect from bridge tolls and transit fares were about a million dollars less than the same week pre-pandemic. So the pandemic impacts are still lingering and we're taking prudent actions to manage our resources and to provide service where there's a demand from customers for service uh, to meet the needs of the community. Um, moving on, uh, on the second page of my GM report is an item that Mr. Uh, Rohde referred to. So I provided a written update on the interoperability efforts that are underway in the region. The Bridge District staff uh, will be on MTC's selection process panel that rates the various proposals and will serve on the techni technical advisory committees. And the goal is to have a, a, a product uh, middle of next year that details some of the regional coordination and efforts that we could pursue um, to keep things moving in the Bay Area to meet the climate emergency. Um, with respect to our employees, I'm uh, pleased to announce or sad to announce the retirement of Daniel Gomez, a fabulous employee. Uh, Mr. Gomez is retiring after 25 years, nine months and 25 days with the district. Right. Danny uh, started as an on-call toll collector. Uh, we called them bridge officers back in the day. And that was in the spring of 1995. And it took him a couple years till February 3rd, 1997 to become a permanent uh, toll collector. He was promoted to bridge sergeant and then bridge as a bridge sergeant served as both a lieutenant in an acting capacity until he was promoted uh, to our finance office. While he's working here, he's pursued his education, ultimately receiving a doctorate. And so he uh, has been working the last few years in our finance office as a program analyst for electronic revenue operations and budget and programs. So uh, he enjoys spending time with his family and friends and traveling, and he looks forward to doing a lot more of that in his well-deserved retirement. So we wish Danny a long and happy retirement. Then I'm pleased to announce the Employee of the Month. The Employee of the Month Committee, which is a committee of employees, not managers, selected Susanna Adamova as the Employee of the Month for this month, November. Um, she is recognized for her hard work and professionalism. She is a ferry operations supervisor, managing the land side of our ferry operations. Uh, she works very, very hard, and she's incredibly committed to providing the best customer service possible. And she has a, a sense of when things aren't working well, and she jumps in and fixes them. She's a take charge person, and she's not afraid to help out regardless of the situation. And she's an invaluable member of the team. So we're very, very pleased to have her as part of our team. She's always trying to look at how to make things better and improve them. So she joined us in 2017. Um, and then prior to that, she uh, worked at a variety of different positions, including at the Lamar Group in San Francisco and uh, working for American Corporate Services in San Francisco. She was born in the Ukraine and she completed her early education in the Ukraine. Uh, she graduated from San Francisco State with a degree in international relations. She's lived in Mill Valley since 2020, where she lives with her husband, Sasha, and their daughter, Sophia. And she enjoys learning languages, learning about different cultures, traveling, hiking, cooking, and a whole host of things. But most of all, she enjoys being uh, a mother. And she uh, is a super mom, so it doesn't leave a lot of free time for all those other endeavors. Um, but while she is with us here working, she is a stellar employee. So hats off to Susan, Susanna. And uh, that concludes my report, and I'm available to answer. All right, we're back up and running. So I'm going to reintroduce, just to be safe, it's item 6C for Ava to start. So we'll do take two. Ava, take it away. President Torio, members of the board, um, directors, and um, my written report is before you. Uh, I would like to highlight a few projects that are uh, presented in my report to you. So first is the suicide deterrent project. Um, I'm pleased to report that the net has been installed almost full length of span two of the suspension bridge. And just as a reminder, what we call span two is the southern half of the main span of the suspension bridge. 
Um, also, the work is progressing in span three of the suspension bridge. Um, about 250 feet of the net remains to be unrolled and attached with temporary straps to the border cables. Um, in span two, the contractor uh, proceeded by unrolling the net and um, uh, sewing, perform final sewing to the border cables. In span three, uh, they are unrolling the net, attach it with temporary straps, and then they will come back and perform the final sewing of the net. Um, with regard to the south approach viaduct and the north approach viaduct, the contractor continues installing net supports on those structures. And today they install six out of 13 arms, um, support arms on the east side of the south approach viaduct and four out of 23 arms on the east side on, of the north approach viaduct. And as a reminder, com the contractor completed installation of the net on the west side of the North Approach Viaduct. Um, on the Fort Point Arch, its site, uh, the contractor began preparation for the net support installation. So moving on um, to our uh, building, uh, Toll Plaza Administration building elevator repairs and improvements. Um, the new piston for the elevator has been completed and the contractor is currently working on installation of elevator fire detection and protection equipment. Um, the contractor is waiting for equipment delivery for the new elevator machine, machine room and for the new elevator control panel. We hope that there will be no uh, delay in delivery of this equipment. Um, and uh, finally, with regard to the uh, Luxpur Ferry Terminal um, dredging, channel dredging, the dredging is approximately 56% complete. Uh, the contractor removed uh, 330,000 cubic yards of the sediments uh, the total quantity is estimated at 586,000 cubic yards. So uh, the, dre the dredge material that it's uh, removed from the berth is disposed at an in-bay sediment disposal location near Alcatraz. But the material removed from the outer channel, we receive permission to dispose it at a beneficial reuse site of the Kalinan Ranch Tidal Marsh Restoration Project. So with this, I'll be happy to answer any question the board may have for me. Uh, th thank you, Ms. Bauer-Ferbush. Are there directors with questions or comments for Ms. Bauer-Ferbush? I'm seeing none, Madam Secretary. Are you seeing any? Oh, there, pardon, excuse me, uh, Director Thier. Um, I just wanted to take a moment uh, to thank uh, Ava Bauer-Furbish and uh, uh, Dire um, Director Mulligan and uh, staff. Um, you know, completing a project like the Suicide Net is not an easy task. And the difference that it's going to make to future generations and to anybody who has ever thought of um, you know, taking their life is is going to be uh, amazing. And I just really want to thank the district. Um, I think this is so important. And I just wanted to take one moment to do that. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Director Thier. Anybody else from the board who uh, has a comment or question for uh, Ms. bauer Bush? And I see no one. Madam Secretary, I will ask again if you see anyone. I see no other hands up. Then let's move along. All right, we're gonna move on to item eight since there's no other reports under item seven. Item 8A is the report of the Transportation Committee meeting of Thursday, November 17th, yesterday. And the summary of recommendations for this meeting can be found on page 59 of your packet. I'll turn it back to you. And uh, directors, uh, as many of you are aware, uh, at yesterday's committee meetings, um, we discussed these items thoroughly. Uh, before bringing them before you today for action. 
Uh, so Vice Chair Hill, uh, you filled in for um, uh, Chair Arnold yesterday. Uh, thank you for that. And, uh, and I think you're doing so again today. Uh, so please begin your committee's report. Good practice. Thank you. Also, a special thanks to the planning department staff for their presentation yesterday. At yesterday's meeting, we received an update on regional transit coordination efforts by the various transit agencies, as well as next steps. This is really exciting. As you mentioned, we do have one item from our meetings for consideration today. I would like to present item 8A1 to authorize execution of the third amendment to contract number 2022-F-085 Vivalon ADA shuttle bus services with Vivalon in San Francisco, uh, San Rafael, California, in the amount of $759,000 for emergency ADA backup service for the Larkspur Ferry, as detailed in the staff report. And I so move. Uh, thank you for the motion, Director Hill. Uh, is there a second? Second. Someone please second. I'll second. We have a second from Director Snyder. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. Um, then, uh, Madam Secretary, a, a roll call vote, please. Thank you. We're voting on item 8A1 again with a person second, starting with Director Arnold, who is absent. Director Conroy. Director Conroy. All right, we'll come back. Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grosbal is absent. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Thier. Director Thier. Aye. Thank you. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Terrio. Yes. Thank you. Circling back, Director Conroy, are you there? Yes, I'm an I. I have to drop off the line. I'm, I'm uh, attending a funeral, so I apologize. Okay, no problem. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. You have 13 eyes. 13 eyes. Uh, the motion passes. Uh, Vice Chair Hill, anything else for us? Uh, Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Vice Chair Hill. Uh, Madam Secretary, then the next item on the agenda. Thank you. We're going to move on to item 8B, and that's the report of the Building and Operating Committee meeting of Thursday, November 17th. And that summary of recommendations for this meeting is, can be found on page 61 of your packet. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Uh, and once again, we discussed these items yesterday at the Building and Operating Committee uh, before bringing them before you today. Uh, Chair Garbarino, have at it. Thank you, President Terrio. Uh, and a special thanks to Michael Hoffman from the Ferry Division for, for providing us with an in-depth presentation on the current state of electrification of ferries. What an informative presentation. It was phenomenal, off the charts, stellar, and I, I sincerely hope that you all reach out perhaps to Almeret and get uh, the video, actually the videos on YouTube, I believe, um, or the audio, the taped version. It was truly um, inspirational and um, you'll learn a lot about hydrogen and get a lot of hope from the conversation or the presentation. Um, we look forward also, of course, to receiving updates on the technology as it continues to evolve and to advance. With that, the Building and Operating Committee has one item to recommend today, and that is approval of item 8B1 to approve contracts with Elliott Bay Design Group of Seattle, Washington, Boston Naval Architecture and Marine Design of Seattle, Washington, uh, Marine Systems Corporation of Boston, Massachusetts, Aurora Marine Design of San Diego, California, and Handy Marine Services of Seattle, Washington, again, relative to contract number 2022F072, on-call engineering, ship check, and on-site shipyard services to provide on-call engineering, ship check, and on-site shipping services for a three-year term 
with two additional one year option terms to a total aggregate not to exceed an amount of $1,500,000 as detailed in the staff report. And I so move. Uh, thank you, Chair Garbarino. Uh, there is a motion. Is there a second this time? A little more quickly. I'll second. And there's one very quickly. Thank you. Um, are there questions or comments from the board members on this item, which we discussed yesterday? I see none. Uh, so, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Thank you. We're voting on item 8B1, and we'll start with Director Arnold, who's absent. Director Conroy, who's just left the call, is absent. Director Garbarino? Aye. Director Judice? Yes. Director Grosball is absent. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Mastin? Aye. Director Park? <laughs> Aye. Director Rabbit? Aye. Director Radoni? Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Director Thier? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Sirio? Yes. Thank you. You have 12 ayes. 12 ayes. The motion passes. Uh, Chair Garbarino, uh, do you have anything else for us? Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Chair Garbarino. Um, Madam Secretary, next item, please. We're going to move on to item 8C, and that's the report of the Finance Auditing Committee meeting of Thursday, November 17th. And that summary recommendation for this meeting is found on pages 63 of your packet. So I'm going to turn it back over to you to introduce. Thank you. Uh, again, the items in 8C were discussed at yesterday's Finance Auditing Committee meeting. Uh, before coming to the board for action today, uh, Chair Rabbit, uh, please start your report. Great. Thank you very much, President Terrio. The Finance Auditing Committee recommends the approval of item 8C1 to receive the independent auditor's financial reports as submitted by Ide Bailey LLP for the annual comprehensive financial report for the year ending June 30th, 2022, and to receive the independent auditor's communication letter regarding matters related to the audit as detailed in the staff report in ISO move. And there is a motion. And I'll second a, it. And there is a second. Okay. Any uh, directors with uh, questions uh, or comments on the motion? Then, Madam Secretary, another roll call vote. Thank you. Voting on item 8C1, starting with Director Arnold's absent, Director Conroy's absent, Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grossworth's <coughs> absent, Director Hernandez is absent, Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Thier. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Tirio. Yes. Thank you. You have 12 ayes. Thank you. 12 ayes. Motion passes. Chair Rabbit, uh, do you have more for us? Yes, thank you, President Cheerio. Next is item 8C2 to receive the annual report of the OPEP Retirement Investment Trust Board as detailed in the staff report, and I so move that as well. And again, that was uh, available for discussion yesterday. Uh, do any board uh, members have um, questions or comments on it? And again, I see none. And so again, Madam Secretary. We have a second. Oh, second. Sorry. Second. <laughs> second. If you need a motion. <laughs> we have the motion from uh, from Chair Rabbit. We just yeah. we have now we have a second. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, so there's a second. Now, any comments or questions from board members? And again, I'm going to say I see none. And again, I'm going to say, Madam Secretary, a roll call vote, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Voting on item 8C2, starting with Director Arnold, who's absent. Director Conroy is absent. Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grosbull is absent. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Thier. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Sirio. Yes. All right. Thank you. You have 12 eyes. Mm -hmm. As, as you can tell from his cough, Director Rabbit is fighting a cold, and I think I was hurrying to get through things faster than I should have. Um, so, Chair Rabbit, uh, do you have anything else for us here? Uh, no, Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Go have a warm toddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Madam Secretary, next item on the agenda, please. Thank you. We're going to move on. There's no addresses to the board under agenda item number nine. We're going to move on to item 10A, and that's relative to conducting the remote meetings. Um, 
these remote committee and board meetings. Um, again, before you seeking the board's approval to adopt a resolution, it allows to continue these remote meetings in accordance with Assembly Bill 361 and until the sunset of the governor's state of emergency on February 28th, 2023, with the understanding the board could be considering this again at its next meeting on December 16th. But I would like to add that I have um, sent some information um, for the president to digest. It was a little bit of a, a wasn't a lot, it was a lot of information. So um, he will be working with the board leadership in determining our next steps, but we did kind of um, give him some some information to work from. So <laughs> if you have something to add. There. Yeah, uh, no, just that there's an interesting list of locations there pretty much scattered up and down the uh, the, the, uh, the, the the spine of the, uh, the district's uh, um, uh, territory. Um, so um, are there board members with any questions on this item? What I would look for a motion is a motion to continue doing as also move the uh, president. There you go. Thank you. Second. And there is a second. Um, Madam Secretary, uh, a roll call vote, please. Thank you. The first and second on item 10A. We'll start with Director Arnold's absent, Director Conroy is absent, Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grosbold is absent, Director Hernandez is absent, Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Thier. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Thierry. Yes. Thank you. That's 12 eyes. Thank you, 12 eyes. This one also passes. Madam Secretary, next item. Going to move on to item 10b and that's the discussion and possible action to terminate the suspension of board procedural rules and policies for COVID-19 related emergency actions. Mr. Mulligan's brief staff reports on page 67 and he is here to answer any questions directors may have. Are there directors uh, with questions for Mr. Mulligan or comments? And again I see none. So what I would look for is a motion to continue consideration of this item. Uh, special business at the next regular meeting of the board. So moved. There's a motion. And is there a second? Second. Second. There's a second. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, I'll roll call vote again. Thank you. Voting on item 10B with the first and second, starting with Director Arnold, who's absent. Director Conroy is absent. Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grosbull and D Director Hernandez are both absent. Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Thier. Director Thier. All right, we'll come back. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Thierry. Yes. All right. We'll circle back. Director Thierry, are you there? Aye. All right. Thank you. That's 12 eyes. 12 eyes. And the motion passes. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, continue on in this vein, please. Okay. I'm continuing on to item 10C, which is the most exciting item on this agenda. And that's the recommendation to approve the district's 2023 Board of Directors meeting schedule. I have a brief staff report for everyone, and it includes an attachment of all the meeting dates and the meetings on page 69 of your packet. And I've consulted with the president on these proposed dates, as well as some of the staff. And I respectfully request the board's approval of the 2023 calendar. This is exciting. Any board members with um, questions or comments on this exciting item? And again, I see none. Uh, so, uh, Madam Secretary, well, actually, do I have a motion to approve the calendar? So moved. Second. There's a motion. Second. Second. Uh, Madam Secretary, now a roll call vote, please. All right. Thank you. We're voting on item 10C with a first and second, starting with Director Arnold, who's absent, Director Conroy is absent, Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grothbull and Hernandez are absent, Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Thier. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Thierry. Yes. Thank you. You have 12 eyes. 
Thank you. Now we know what we're going to be doing. What we're going to be doing with twenty-four mornings next year. Um, <laughs> item is adopted. So, uh, on to before we move on to item ten D, report of advisory committee for review of officers, which includes a closed session report, followed by an open se sessions action, as well as item eleven, unfinished business, which is a closed session report on anticipated litigation. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being patient during this meeting, especially for my flubs. Uh, we'll place the public teleconferencing line into a waiting room and suspend the YouTube live stream while we are in a closed session. And uh, Madam Secretary, I believe we're staying on this uh, this Zoom call for board members, so please don't take off and look for another one. Uh, Mr. Manolius, please take us into closed session. Thanks, President Ontario. At this time, the board's going to close session for two items. First, a conference with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation under Government Code Section 54956.9D2 uh, for one potential case. And secondly, uh, the board will go into closed session for a report uh, by for a public employee performance evaluation and conference with its labor negotiator pursuant to Government Code Sections 54957 and 54957.6 in regard to the general manager, the district engineer, the auditor controller, the secretary of the district and the attorney for the district. And what right. I'll do is, I'm sorry, what I'll do is when we come out of closed session, I'll report on the first one and then there'll be the open session item on the second one. Okay, so I'll ask directors to stay on the Zoom and I'm gonna announce when we're in closed session. So as a second, Blake line off a hold. Okay, the public line is back and merge. I'm just looking over to make sure our stream is up. So if anyone is joining us, all they have to do is refresh and then we'll be up and running again. Okay, well, we're ready to go. So, uh, Mr. Manolius, you take this out of a closed session, please. Of course, President Terrio, thanks. Uh, so the board met in closed session for a conference with legal counsel regarding a matter of anticipated litigation under Government Code 54956.9D2. Uh, one potential case, the board was briefed on the status. Uh, and with the second matter, I'll turn it over to Amaret. Back to you, Amaret. I think, I think I'm going to turn it back fine. to President Ontario. I'm not yeah, sure. That's right. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Uh, the Advisory Committee for Review of Officers of the District met yesterday. And in light of our officers' tireless and unfaltering work and forthrightness, uh, creativity, transparency, and strong advocacy, on behalf of the district and the board, I move the following salary and benefits changes for our office. Actually, I don't move anything. David, I'm reading. I'm reading something you should be doing. Please take. Please give us a motion, David. I'd be. I'd be happy to offer the motion uh, and agree with your uh, description of our officers. Uh, we are fortunate to have them. They do tireless work for the district, especially in these difficult times all around, um, and we are very grateful. Um, I do want to make a motion. Uh, with the following salary and benefit changes for our officers. Number one, a three and a half percent salary increase for the four salaried officers, the general manager, the auditor controller, the district engineer, and the district secretary. And number two, an additional three and a half percent salary increase for the four salaried officers to take effect January 1st, 2023. Number three, another three and a half percent salary increase for the four salaried officers to take effect on July 1st, 2023. And number four, an increase in the amount given to the district secretary annually for her 401A account from $1,000 to $6,500. And I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second, second that motion. I see very, very oh. seconds. We should do public comment. I, I believe me, I'm going to get there. Okay. Um, and so, uh, but first, are there any questions or comments from the board members? Uh, here in public forum on the on the uh, motion. Uh, Director Thier. Uh, yes, I just wanted to thank all of our staff for their work. Um, it's been, you know, as a relatively new member of the board, um, your work is invaluable and a day doesn't go by when I don't appreciate you. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to give a big shout out and say thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Director Thier. Director Judice. I just want to echo um, what Holly said, and I was impressed by the thoroughness of the process. 
and uh, the excellent performance of our officers. And uh, once again, I appreciate the additional uh, narrative, uh, the histor historical perspective that some of the directors provided uh, during the closed session. Thank you. Thank you, Director Judice. Any other uh, directors with uh, comments or questions on this item? I do not see any. Madam Secretary, I will ask if you see anyone. I see no hands up. Then uh, public comment, please, if there's anyone. We do. Um, I'm going to call on David Pelpel. I believe he may want to speak. David, are you there? Uh, I am here. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I was just taking in uh, the information from the report. So I heard um, three and a half percent, uh, I guess, effective immediately, another three and a half percent effective January 1st, and another three and a half percent effective July 1st for the four um, officers and an increase in compensation from uh, 1,000 to 6,000 for the district secretary for the 401A account. Was that what I understood? Um, small correction, 6,500 is uh, the increase for the Sorry. district secretary. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's cool. Um, so yes, uh, I believe there has been uh, good work by the district, including the, the four uh, named officers. Um, my concern is about uh, compensation relative to other uh, district employees, whether they're represented or non-represented. Um, that's a total of 10.5% uh, um, over a relatively uh, short uh, period of time, uh, about uh, eight months. Um, and that compounds to a higher amount because I think it's three and a half, then three and a half on the, the adjusted base and then another three and a half on that further adjusted base. So it, it compounds to a higher amount. Um, I don't believe um, other than specific adjustments for um, bridge patrol officers and um, certain others uh, that other employees have uh, received um, compensation uh, or compensation and benefit uh, increases um, at that level of 10.5% uh, uh, plus. So I think that um, increases the disparity of uh, salaries and benefits uh, between the highest uh, compensated employees uh, in the district and the lowest compensated employees. And I would be more interested in compressing uh, that um, uh, difference or uh, disparity. So um, I certainly support um, salary and benefit adjustments for the officers, but I would not be supportive of um, such adjustments um, at that level. And I think it's going to, uh, if uh, approved today, which it seems like is, is likely to happen, I think it's going to put more pressure on uh, increased salary and benefits for all the other employees in the district, which will hasten the uh, uh, oncoming fiscal cliff. Um, and that's a, a great concern of mine. So I, I just think it will have those Me Too implications um, and wanted to raise those as equity concerns. And thank you for listening to my comments. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pilpel. Uh, before I uh, provide a clarification to Mr. Pilpel, uh, I'll ask if there's anyone else from the public week wishing to speak. We have no other speakers. Then, uh, in fact, um, we were careful uh, to match uh, the uh, the wage increases provided to um, the so-called coalition uh, of uh, unions um, and and the workers they represent uh, when we provided when we uh, uh, recommended uh, these um, uh, these increases to the salaries of the officers. Uh, so no, they are not running ahead. Uh, they are running uh, the same, and in fact. The first increase comes at a later point uh, than it uh, will have for the uh, for the uh, coalition employees. Um, so um, then, uh, uh, I guess uh, with that and no other public comment, um, Madam uh, Secretary, a uh, time for roll call vote. Thank you. We're voting on item 10D uh, with a first from Director Rabbit and a second from Director Garbarino. Um, I will start with Director Arnold, who's absent. Director Conroy is absent. Director Garbarino. Aye. Director Judith Kay. Yes. Director Grosbell is absent. Director Hernandez is absent. Director Mastin. Aye. Director Parr. Aye. Director Rabbit. Aye. Director Radoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Director Theo. 
Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Tyrio. Yes. Thank you. You have twelve eyes. Thank you. Uh, this item is therefore adopted. Uh, we have no new business to report. Item number 13 is communications. Uh, we have none since the last uh, uh, meeting of the board, October 28th, uh, which brings us to the end of the agenda. Uh, so thanks to everyone who participated in today's meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank and happy Thanksgiving. Second. Second. Happy Thanksgiving. A motion, a second, various happy Thanksgivings and happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, Madam Secretary, I'll ask uh, again, is there, are we adjourning in anyone's memory today? I have no one listed on our adjournment. Thank you. Then I'm going to look around and see if anyone is shaking their head about adjourning right now. Uh, I do not see that. I, I see no, I see somebody who doesn't count. Kim's shaking his head. Um, so um, there is no uh, objection to adjourning. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. It is 11.29 a.m. Thanks so much. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank See you later.